You are if you oh, stand yes, in there. Oh, yes, you are. We, yeah. you, he was barbecued. That's when I started to believe secondhand smoke is a real thing. It's fucking yeah, totally real. I didn't think real. it was until then. People that don't think it's real, it's crazy. When we used to mock Tate because Tate didn't want to get high. We, we would just smoke pot and Tate would have to stick his head out the window like an ostrich. <laughs> I feel like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> he was worried he didn't want to get hot boxing. That's when we used to get vans. Remember we used to get vans for uh -huh. a while? Yeah, we, conversion vans. Yeah, we would rent vans because there were so many of us. Oh, yeah. You Eddie would come, would come with and a Tate fucking would come entourage. And, yeah, we would entourage it. And Red Van would film it. We would just have shenanigans in every town we went to. You bring you, of course. And then Eddie, Tate, and Red Band as the non comedians. And yeah. then me and Duncan or me and Diaz yeah. or whatever. Um, there was a shitload of us. Yeah, so five, six people. And then we would feast. We'd go to these fucking amazing restaurants. And Fogo feast. a lot. Oh, we went to a lot of Fogos. That brings me back. One of my memories, I believe it was Cincinnati, was nearby, right near the hotel. It was, was Cincinnati. It? Okay, Churrascaria. Yeah, right across the street. Yeah. And uh, as we're leaving, Fucking newly uh, Botoxed uh, What's Vandelay. his name Vandelay came in We're like dude That's fucking Vandelay yeah. And he was He was the most Fierce Pre-game Fighter The way he'd look at you Like I want to kill you For taking this fight Yeah Nobody was scarier Than him in his prime Yeah Krokop was scary Because he would just be So calm Like I don't care Let's do this Well Krokop stared him down More than anybody Ever stared Vandelay down He wouldn't break Could, Well Krokop was a Straight up killer like, yeah, he's a like I've, I've murdered people He's the head of the Croatian blood. Yeah Croatian anti-terrorist squad They've begged for mercy And I've showed them none out And he was a world class Kickboxer Like he wasn't afraid Of Vandelay's strike And he was a heavyweight And Vandelay really Wasn't a heavyweight Yeah but anyway, we saw him checking in, and we went mm -hmm. to eat. He was in that churrascaria 15 yeah. minutes late. Like, he oh, threw yeah. his shit down and came in. He yeah. was, like, so excited that's, about that's it. That's it. Look, look at Krokop. Wow. Yeah. Dude. Nobody stared down Krokop back then. That was when Krokop <laughs> was at the peak. Look and at this Japanese guy going through his routine. He's like, fuck. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure this was before uh, Krokop really had sort of mastered MMA. He was coming over as a straight kickboxer, and they had different rules for him. The rules for Crow Cop were like you can only fight on the ground for like thirty seconds. They had oh, like really? yeah, and if the fight went to a distance, it would be a draw. Damn. Yeah, because he really didn't have a lot of experience with takedown defense or, or any MMA fighting back then. And the, Vanderlei didn't get Botox. He had his face reconstructed because his nose. He had been in so many brawls. His nose had completely flattened where he couldn't breathe out of it, and he had so much scar tissue over his eyes that his eyes were drooping down. So he'd get cut. Instantly, any uh, any punch that would hit him would open him up like a and gash, then he see. and he and his nose was completely flat. So they took a chunk of his rib and rebuilt his nose, and he had his nose built big so he could breathe out of it more. And yeah. then he had all the scar tissue removed from his eyebrows, and then pulled back. And according to Dana, I don't know, but Dana's like he got it done in Brazil on the cheap, and it just like wasn't the it didn't they uh, didn't really make him look like Vanderlei. Wow. So he went from Vanderlei Silva. It's so like Vanderlei Silva has the most profound facial form change in all of MMA because he went from yeah. pretty. If you go back, he's Vanderlei like Sammy Sosa. Silva. Vanderlei Silva versus go to Vanderlei Silva versus Dan Henderson one when they first fought in Pride. He he was a normal, he was actually pretty good looking guy, like regular good looking guy. And yeah. then by the time he left Pride, his face was just smashed in. By the time he fought Chuck Liddell. His face was just smashed in. His nose had been literally flattened. Wow. For, from punches and kicks, and not just from fights, but also from training. The training that he did at, at Shoot Box in Curitiba was <sighs> Yeah, his face was fucked Fuck, up. Fucked up. That also, okay, would bring me to another thing. We got to go to Brazil one time. Yeah. We didn't do a show that time. But see, that's, I, that's him versus Dan Henderson. Yeah, pretty the first normal fight. looking. Can make that a little bigger so you can see. Yeah, super normal looking. Just a normal looking badass. That was the first fight where he fought Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson's chin looks like it's drawn on. Yeah, he's got an it's like somebody chin. fucked up a fucking I know, tick like when he's drawing extra it. extra bone. Yeah. Jay Leno and him should chin You off. see that picture of Vanderlei above that with the eye all fucked up? Ugh. That was him from that fight. Oh, really? Dan Henderson connected with a haymaker of a right hand and fucked up his eye. I love how this guy's smile on that. Like, look at this badge. Look yeah. at this cool picture I'm about to take. But, you I mean, look at Vanderlei's face there in comparison to his face at, later on in his career. Totally different. Dan Henderson... Looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. He looks like the same guy. He's just so an tough. older version. He might be one of the toughest guys that's ever lived. So tough. Yeah, Dan is just a fucking... Yeah, now look at that picture up different. there with the tattoos on the shoulders. 
Go to that one. Now, that's him after facial reconstruction. Make that larger. See? That's after the facial reconstruction is settled in. You know? Oh, we saw him right then. And he just fought real recent, like a couple weeks ago. No, he wait. Got, he's still fighting? Got knocked out by Rampage. Rampage flatlined him. Wow. Yeah. Rampage is still fighting, <clears throat> too. Yep. Rampage still carries that power. That was when he KO'd, um, Rampage KO'd him in uh, the UFC. With him knocking, left him knocking him through the ring, through the ring mm. in Pride was one of the coolest. Yeah. I saw that later. I mean, I, you know, way later. You come to the UFC and it's like all these highlights, this backlog of highlights of MMA. Like, yeah. Wow. Especially after the UFC purchased Pride. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rio was really cool. Yeah. It's a place to go. And actually that fight, in terms of the audience response, the two biggest ones were Sylvia Couture in Columbus, first time they'd ever been in Columbus, and that Rio fight. Jose Aldo versus, uh, that was uh, Chad Mendez, right? Which one? <clears throat> the one in Brazil, wasn't it? It was a spinning back kick. Oh, that was Terry Adam versus uh, Edson Barboza. Dude, from day, from fight one of the undercard, the yeah. place was so light. You could feel it shaking. Yeah. And I remember them them chanting something in the crowd because Dana did smart. It's one of the first like f foreign ones, and he made a Brazilian fighter on every on mm -hmm. every fight. Yeah, uh, he fucked up a little by having so a couple times Brazilian versus Brazilian, but at every fight, and they were chanting something in you're the audience. Die. Yeah, you were like you go to the translator, like, hey, what are they saying? <laughs> like, you're gonna <laughs> die. And he's like, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god yeah they didn't play games man oh my god that's when they were like legit and i believed it like we got to figure out how we're gonna get chelsea on and out of here if fights anderson here and i'm like come on and then you go there and you're like oh i believe it now yeah well they're fiercely fiercely nationalistic